my channel or welcome if you're new here my name is Ella and for today's video we're going to be talking about the witch's ladder now I've done a video relatively recently on my Instagram about witch's ladders and I just thought I would make a more or a little bit more of an in-depth video here on YouTube so this is a beginner video um, because I feel like witch's ladders are a great kind of tool or a great practice or spell uh, for you to try as a beginner so this video is uh, partially inspired by my book the book of spells I do include a couple of witch's ladders in my book um, and for a couple of different purposes but uh, I just wanted to obviously do this video as well as that. Let's talk a little bit or very briefly about the history of witches' ladders. Uh, the first one was found in Wellington in England in 1878 and it was found in an attic uh, and it basically was just a rope with feathers woven into it. Now obviously archaeologists and anthropologists and historians um, suspect that it had a magical connection. We found further uh, witches' ladders or very similar ones in other places such as Italy with a very similar concept with again feathers being woven in uh, as well as things like hair uh, for baneful purposes. So that's just a tiny amount of information on the history. There's of course so much more and I would suggest for you to do a little bit more research if you want in the history of witch ladders. So witches ladders fall under the category of not magic. Not magic is essentially the act of tying in or sometimes untying a rope or a knot or some sort of weaven or woven uh, material with an intention. So this can apply to many different things. Not magics can literally just be rope that you tie together. Uh, it can also, as I just mentioned, be woven into, for example, clothing, which is a very popular part of folk magic. And you actually see that incredibly commonly with symbols, sigils, and things like that being woven into clothing or into some form of, you know, tablecloth, for example, um, just things like that. You can have more tapestries. There's a lot of different aspects to not magic and it's a little bit of an umbrella term. So another note to make is witches ladders are a part of traditional folk magic. They are not exclusive to a specific region or country or culture. We see a lot of these types of magics or folk magics being done in many different regions of the world. Again, there's a lot of variety when it comes to any type of knot magic, knot magic being more in an umbrella term, which is ladders having mostly been associated with the kind of continental European um, or also the English Isles, of course, because that's where we saw the first one. So it's one of those things where it's a very practical and a very easy way of practicing. I feel like a lot of folk magic tends to be that. Uh, and yeah, as I just said, witches ladders can have a variety of purposes. Um, so it can be helpful or baneful. It can be used for protection. It can be used to curse someone. It can be used for healing magic. There's a wide, wide array of purposes that you can really kind of do. Um, I have a friendship not magic spell in my book too, for example, as well as a protection one. There's a lot of different ways that you can use this technique. It really is that, that's what it is. It's a technique and you can really make your own with it. The way that you can make a witch's ladder is either commonly by tying knots into a piece of rope or string or by braiding um, three or more uh, together. Now I also like to tie in charms or trinkets that are associated with what I am trying to achieve. So maybe protection, maybe healing, things like that. And I also like to work with color correspondences in my cords. Now, obviously, historically, that was not necessarily always the case, just because certain colors may have been difficult to come by. But now that we have that possibility, you know, why not make use of it? So I like to work with color correspondences in my not magic or magic in general. I did mention you can tie in or untie your not magic. Now, I haven't seen much historical evidence necessarily that actually speaks about untying knots. However, this is a bit of my personal UPG perhaps. I do think that 
it is a very magical and powerful thing to tie in a um, thing that you wish to release into your knot and then untie it in a given moment or during that specific spell even or um, to do that in a month's time for example so that is something that you can definitely also kind of play around with or experiment with let's say a good example of that would be for example illness so when you are feeling sick you could tie a knot that ties in your sickness and then essentially what you would be doing is actually untying that knot in a very ritualistic manner to untie or release that illness out of your body obviously when we're talking about any kind of medical uh, healing spells it's never meant to like replace medical attention obviously but as with any folk magic a lot of healing um, and a lot of kind of healing spells and charms were used because that's really what people had on hand so i feel like they kind of are a good thing to add to your medical attention so just a little note about medical kind of things but you could do the same for for example a relationship as well for like a love spell if you want to release yourself of a relationship you could you know tie in the relationship untie that knot if you so wanted to a little bit on how to actually create your own witch's ladder they can be quite simple actually so um, I like to work with numbers and that is also one of the most common ones that you will see if you look it up online for example one that you might or probably will stumble upon is a chant including a nine knot process um, I have a version of that in my book obviously I don't have the exact words because plagiarism but <laughs> I do have a version of that in my book with my own kind of chant of um, a protection knot magic spell and so essentially the idea goes that you would create a loop with your cord now i like to do braids because i find braiding is just more what i've just been kind of i don't know braiding just feels more natural to me quite honestly but if you prefer knots do knots uh, i just like braids so i like to take my three cords i like to make a loop and then knot that and then that already is the first knot and that's when you already start your chant and you can really make this up if you would like you can of course also look up the traditional one or the one in my book so let's say we're doing this for protection right so you can chant something along the lines of um, by the first knot let the magic begin or let the protection begin you know something along those lines and then i start to braid and as i go with braiding i really focus on the intention and i really weave the intention into my witch's ladder and and then as I go, I like to add trinkets or charms, even tag locks into my witch's ladder. So they can include things like nails, they can include things like bells, feathers, which are of course quite traditional hair if you want to um, associate this with a specific person. So I use my own hair for my own protective witch's ladder. But if this was to, for example, be applied to someone else, you could use someone else's uh, tag locks. So once you've woven that trinket in, I would make the second knot and again make a chant by the knot of two. You know, the protection has doubled. You kind of like to work with those numbers a little bit in those chants. And then you continue braiding and braiding and so on and so forth. Traditionally, for a witch's ladder, you see nine being the number most used. But honestly, if you want to work with three, six, nine, 12, or 13, 13 is a very magical number, it can really be up to you. Obviously, I guess somewhat within reason. If you have a favorite number or a number that is your lucky number, you can obviously weave that in as well. So my lucky number is a two digit number so i feel like that would be too many knots but you could of course you know add those numbers together and then it would be like eight for example you could do eight knots but nine is traditional and that's just one that you see very frequently so once i have my witch's ladder done really all i like to do is just hang it up on the wall <laughs> so i feel like there's not that much to it i just like to hang it where i feel like it is the most um, practical or makes the most sense so if i were to make a witch's ladder that is associated with uh, dreaming and spirit
spirit flight or anything that is you know supportive of safe dreams or protected sleep things like that i would hang it near my bed whereas if i'm doing anything that is general protection i like to just hang it around my altar room um so and that's where i have mine right there as well on on that wall right there so that's kind of what um my recommendation would be for you that actually already wraps it up for this video um, if you have any questions leave them down below and of course thank you so much for watching if you like this video consider giving it a like and subscribe and i will leave all my socials down below also a special thank you to my patrons for making this video possible if you would like to become a patron member and support this channel then i have the link to my patreon in the description box as well as well of course the other links including to my book if you are interested in purchasing that and with that being said thank you so much everyone for watching and for being here and let's be bye